Uh, thank you and good morning. Um, you are joining the um, pre-bid and technical review meeting for the Chicago Department of Transportation Lincoln Square Brown Line Area Improvements Project for the uh, PBC. The agenda today is uh, essentially we'll do introductions, procurement details, compliance details, and then um, after the procurement and compliance details, we'll go into the technical review aspect of the project. Okay, and my name is Patricia Montenegro. I'm the contract officer for the project. And we'll go ahead and uh, make a quick round of introductions here. Um, we have James Borkman. Please introduce yourself and the team. Good morning, everyone. James Borkman, procurement. Also have many uh, keys procurement and Miguel Fernandez from procurement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then on behalf of uh, the compliance team, we have Jesse. Jesse, please introduce yourself and any other team members who have joined. Good morning, Jesse Rodriguez, BBC Compliance. Okay. Jesse is. Uh, Kim be on or anything? Uh, I'm not sure if Kim is on. Uh, I think she's yes, having a I, I am. Her. Okay, go ahead. Good morning, Kim Smith, <clears throat> compliance. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, and then from our development team, has who do we have from our development team? Cal, Randy, no? And Marianne Van Hook. Marianne, okay, thank you, Marianne. Van Hook. And I'm with Ochi, but I'm at the PBC. Okay, thank you. All right, and then at this time, we'll turn it over to Joanne, who is from um, the Chicago Department of Transportation. Joanna, uh, can you please go ahead and introduce yourself and your team as well? Good morning, everyone. My name is Joanna Zaidan. I am the uh, PM for CDOT Streetscape section for this project. And here I have with me Garth Wemmer, also PM, and Josh Casey from the uh, CDOT construction management team. Uh, Laura, uh, if you can introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. Laura Supinchek uh, from TY Lynn, engineer of record for this project. Thank you, Joanna and Laura. I see that Randy has joined on this. Oh, yep. He is joined, Randy. Yeah, good morning. Sorry, good morning. Sorry for joining late. Uh, Randy Williams, Deputy Director of Construction, PVC. Okay, thank you, Randy. And then um, I believe that's it for PBC and the CDOT and Partners team. Um, and then we did have a contractor join us. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself again? Mo from FH Passion. Okay. Got it. My name is Nolan from FH Passion. Okay. Thank you. It just says Mo on your screen. Sorry. All right. We will go into the procurement details now. So essentially, uh, we will go into depth uh, later on in the technical review portion of this meeting with regards to the specific um, uh project uh, area, but um, listed on the screen, we have West Leland Avenue from Northwestern Avenue to North Lincoln Avenue, and then North Lincoln Avenue, West Leland Avenue to Brown Line L tracks, and then uh, Northwestern Avenue, West East Avenue to West Leland Avenue. The general scope of work includes the streetscape improvements um, within these areas and along the CTA elevated tracks to the south, um, full reconstruction of the plaza located at the southeast corner of Northwestern and uh, West Leland, reconstruction of the existing parking lot at the southwest corner of West Leland Avenue and North Lincoln Avenue, renovations to the area under the CTA elevated tracks between 
Northwestern and North Lincoln Avenues adjacent to the CTA Western Brown Line Station. Improvements include the geometric changes to the West Leland Avenue roadway, new traffic signals at Northwestern and West Leland Avenues, new protected bike lane, new lighting, resurfacing and pavement markings, curb and gutter replacement, landscaping improvements, drainage work, new site furniture, and a community identifier. The contractor is gonna be required to prepare a uh, phasing and logistics plan for review and approval um, by CDOT and PBC prior to the mobilization and commencement of any work. The time of completion as noted in book one is uh, to be achieved no later than July 31st, 2025. Um, and there are a series of milestones as listed on the screen and within book one. You have your schedule milestone, uh, which has a, a milestone date of October 31st, 2024. And then your schedule, uh, sorry, the substantial completion deadline uh, of July 31st, 2025. Um, and that milestone uh, should not start any sooner than November 1st, 2024. Schedule milestone is um, also a completion date of 7-31-2025, but shall not start sooner than December 2nd, 2024. And schedule milestone number three uh, has a completion date of also July 31st, 2025, with a no sooner than April 1st, 2025 date. The liquidated damages also listed in book one are $1,500 per day for failure to achieve the substantial completion date, $500 per day for failure to achieve schedule milestone number one, and then $1,500 per day for failure to achieve the schedule milestones number two and three. Access to the documents, to the bidding documents are available through our current opportunities page. Um, this presentation will be posted on that page and you'll so you'll have access to links and, and all of this information being presented today because uh, it is being recorded. Um, the uh, documents are also available on our online plan room and uh, the printer's um, contact information as, is as listed on the screen. Again, it is Aloha Document Services, Inc. doing business as Aloha Print Group. Access to the documents is also available through our assist agencies. They receive a copy of these um, documents as well. Um, so if, uh, I mean, there's various forms of accessing the document if you cannot uh, one way or the other. The technical review meeting is scheduled immediately after this meeting um, at approximately 11.30 a.m. There is a site visit that's scheduled for Monday at 9 a.m. So the meeting point is outside um, at the outdoor CTA plaza at the intersection of Northwestern Avenue and West Leland Avenue. Failure um, to become you know, familiar with the project shall not relieve or alter the bidder's responsibility for completing the work as required. Request for information. So any um, you know, questions with regards to the big documents or you know, book one or book two, um, or the drawings should be directed to my attention at patricia.montenegro at cityofchicago.org. We have a questions deadline of Tuesday, August 13 uh, by 4 p.m. So we kindly request that you submit all of your questions um, before that deadline to ensure that we uh, provide you know, an adequate response. There is an addenda that is uh, pending to be issued. Um, so please stay tuned to PBC alerts, our alert system to uh, ensure that you receive um, information regarding that addenda.
Apologies, Erin, had a slight delay. Um, bids are due on Tuesday, August 20th at 11 a.m. The, um, the bid opening is um, streamed live and it's gonna be recorded and available um, on our website um, on PBC's homepage and the current opportunities page for uh, this project. Bid submission requirements. So we um, are accepting electronic submission only, one complete copy of the bid document with original signatures in blue ink or digital signature. It must include a copy of your bid bond and it must include the master bid form, which is inclusive of the master bid tab, the schedule of prices and the award criteria sheet. So that master bid form must be submitted um, within that email in Excel and PDF format. Um, and the PDF documents must be a searchable PDF form and not a scanned copy. So um, for those who are familiar with our um, electronic submission, um, I just wanna highlight that we do have a different email address uh, for which we are requesting bids be submitted to. So it will include um, an email to my email address at patricia.montenegro at cityofchicago.org, but we also have uh, a, new, a new email, pbc procurement at cityofchicago.org. If for some reason um, you uh, cannot submit electronically, we are requesting that you submit um, in writing to my attention um, a request identifying your reason and we will take it into consideration. The pre-award is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, August 22nd at 9 a.m. And the apparent low bidder will be issued uh, correspondence um, and a meeting invite as to uh, the confirmed date and time for this meeting. But it is, again, currently scheduled for Thursday, August 22nd at 9 a.m. The notice of award um, is anticipated to be released after um, the PBC Board of Commissioners meeting, um, which will occur in September. So we are this we are anticipating going to our board meeting, uh, September um, Board of Commissioners meeting. The successful general contractor will also be required to provide a compliance certificate of insurance and payment and performance bond within seven days of notice of issuance. Book one and book two highlights, um, essentially the estimated construction budget for this uh, project can be found in book one, page two, it is 5.6 to $5.7 million. The mandatory project staffing also listed in book one, page four. Scheduling requirements, book one, page four. Liquidated damages, book one, pages four to five. And the prevailing wage rates are as listed on page five um, and page 44. Joint venture opportunities. Um, as everyone uh, should be aware, uh, PBC is very um, receptive to joint venture opportunities. So we welcome the, uh, the opportunity on um, the um, partnerships between the contracting firms uh, to do uh, joint ventures. And um, if your firm decides um, to move forward as a joint venture partner, we require that you submit a Schedule B. Um, Schedule B is found um, in Book One, page 29. It's three pages. 
And then we ask that you submit a JV agreement. Um, it could come through as draft, but by the time we award, it must be finalized. So please take that into consideration. And then um, any certifications from MBE, WBE partners um, must be um, submitted along with your bid. And our compliance team will go into details re with regards to that. The bid form um, included in book one should look similar to uh, what you see on the screen now. Um, so there's the base a line item for base work only, then the commission's contract contingency, along with a site work allowance. Um, this bid form is um, electronic, so everything will be calculated for you. You'll see um, in the workbook, you'll find three worksheets. So you'll have your master bid tab, your uh, award criteria tab, and your uh, schedule prices tab. In the schedule prices tab, you will enter your unit prices in each cell, and then it will automatically total at the bottom, and then uh, bring it over to the um, to the line items on the bit, um, master bid tab. We wanna make sure that you also complete the surety and the bidder's information section below. And um, the award criteria figure is um, as listed on the screen here. And you'll enter your figure here and it will automatically total for you. Basis of award is as listed in book one, page eight, um, award is gonna be made to the uh, responsible bidder submitting the lowest award criteria figure um, and otherwise responsive to all of the requirements of the contract documents. Firms are required to fill out the entire bid form to be considered responsive. The commission reserves the right to reject any and all bids uh, wherever such rejection is in our best interest and bids that the PBC considers to be materially um, unbalanced will be rejected. Okay, at this time, um, I believe we're gonna have Jesse go over the compliance details. So Jesse, take it away. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. The MBWB goals for this project are 26% MBE and 6% WBE. Uh, we only accept certifications from the City of Chicago or Cook County, but please note to receive credit, the firm must be certified in the scope of work they are performing. <clears throat> Excuse me. For more information on the MBW special conditions, you can refer to Book 2, Article 23. Next. Uh, the work criteria figure. The maximum award criteria figure you could commit to is 70% for minority journey workers apprentices, and laborers. And the maximum award criteria figure for female journey worker, I'm sorry, and the maximum award criteria for female journey worker, female apprentice, and female labor is 15%. The community hiring goal for this project is 7.5%, and the city residency goal is 50%. These percentages are based off of the total hours worked on the project. Next, please. Patty, is it? Yes. Um, it's taking please it. hold. There's, yeah, there appears to be like a delay. No worries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is the community hiring mat for this project. 7.5% of the total hours work must come from people residing in the highlighted communities. Next, please. We use B2G now for our payment tracking system and compliance monitoring. For MBE and WE firms that are manufacturers, they will receive 100% credit, suppliers will receive 60% credit, and brokers will receive 0% credit. The Schedule D and Schedule C must be submitted with your bid package. Next, please.
The, the Schedule D must be completed by the general contractor. This form is for MBE WE credit amount. It must be filled out and signed. Please note, suppliers can only receive 60% 60, 60 credit of their contract value. For example, if their contract value is, is for 100,000, they will only receive credit for 60,000. Only the 60,000, only the 60% credit should reflect on the Schedule D, not their full contract value. Next, please. Okay, this is a Schedule C that should, should only be filled out and signed by the MBW subcontractor. It should be filled out completely, including the contract value and the scope of work. Also, on page two of the Schedule C, the sub subcontracting levels must be filled out in the form signed at the bottom. That's all I have, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesse. I um, want to uh, reiterate that um, I'm the sole point of contact for um, this project, and um, all questions should be directed to my attention at patricia.montenegro at cityofchicago.org. Okay, at this time, um, well, have we had any other um, contractors join us? Do we yes, we've had a couple, Patty. We have okay. R. Bolner, if they'd identify themselves, please. Um, let me get off of mute. We can hear you. Oh, you nope. can hear me? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Bob Bellner with ReSteel Engineers, so we're a design firm. Thanks, Bob. And we also had uh, Gina, if you want to introduce yourself. Yes, hi, Gina Kunganga with Restyle Engineers, MEP. Great, thanks, Gina. Okay. And that's all we had, uh, Patty. Okay. All right, um, do we have any questions um, from the contractors at this point? with regards to procurement details. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like anyone has, we don't have any questions in the chat, James. All clear. Excellent, thank you. All right, so at this time, uh, we will turn it over to um, Randy, who will provide um, general details with regards to the project, um, and then he will um, turn it over to uh, the design team. Randy? Uh, thank you, Patty. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Uh, just a quick um, brief overview. Um, Patty did an excellent job in giving us an overview of the project and the project location, uh, some of the parameters, um, as well as um, the details of of the scope of work, mainly being street uh, scape improvements, um, some plaza work, uh, uh, work in the parking lot, work being done underneath the ground line tracks. But uh, just before we kind of get into some of the technical details and the logistics, uh, certainly want to uh, say that uh, we are certainly grateful for all of the tremendous hard work that has gone uh, forward on this uh, project. Thus far, credible, credible, credible efforts uh, from our partners uh, with CDOT and the design engineer team of uh, TY Lane, which you will certainly hear more about um, during this technical review. Uh, some of the uniqueness of this project, the coordination of the utilities have been uh, completed and done with uh, with this this uh, team. Uh, coordination of all the partners with CTA. Um, our OUC permitting uh, review, all of that has been taking place as well. Uh, work being completed by others in which you, you've probably seen in the, in the plans already, but we'll you know, kind of highlight some of those things. The phasing um, and the logistics um, is another item that you will uh, see that, that our partners have took some, some real time into thinking 
And with our partnership together, we've been uh, really looking at the phasing, looking at the logistics and traffic studies and how we'll be able to um, construct and build and rebuild this um, streetscape improvement as well as the plaza area, working with CTA and, and the bus routes and pedestrian walkways, pedestrian paths. And, and so again, um, we'll, we're going to turn over to our design team, TYLN, and they'll take us through uh, the technical review and some of the plans. Again, thank you, CDOT, for the opportunity and working with our partners. Thank you. So I turn it over to either Joanna at this time to take us through our, the rest of our technical review. Thanks, Randy. Um, as you explained already, the project area, I think we can move to the next slide and I'll call Laura, who is the engineer of record to um, provide some of the details on the staging and some technical details on the, the entire project. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Joanna. Um, okay, this slide shows the site phasing and logistics plan that we have designed for the project. So I want to um, point out the color coding with respect to the milestones. Uh, milestone number one is indicated by stages 1A, 1B, 1C, and then 2A and 2B, and additionally stage three. Uh, it's the new roadway, plaza, and associated site improvements improvements. And again, work um, for this area cannot commence sooner than November 1st, 2024, as illustrated previously uh, within this uh, presentation. And then within the green is going to be, um, actually, let's go to the blue stage four. That is the area under the CTA tracks. And within there, and then the parking lot area is the green area indicated there. So I want to just note that the parking lot area there um, must remain open for use by the public during stages 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, and 3 and 4. So keep that in mind. That work start cannot commence until um, April 1st, 2025. Um, so that parking lot needs to remain open until then. Um, I want to just go over real quick just the general phasing for the project. So stage one, um, indicated by the cross hatching, is basically just eastbound only traffic that's going to be utilizing uh, the existing eastbound lane within Leland Avenue and then continue to southbound. So there will be a detour in place for westbound traffic along Leland for this project. That detour is going to remain in place for stages one and stages two. Um, there's just going to be a shift in the direction on if they're going to be on the eastbound or the westbound lanes. Please note along Western Avenue that within stages one and two, two northbound lanes and two southbound lanes will be maintained during construction and the stages will shift which lanes, um, if it's going to be on the east side or the west side, those lanes will be on. Um, mainly the A, B, Cs, relate to the intersection staging. So the all this is outlined to the right and also in the plans that, uh, following this diagram. Okay, we can move on to the existing conditions, please. Sure. Um, Laura, before we continue, I have made you co-host in case you had your yours on the screen and you wanted to navigate in, in that manner. Otherwise, I can continue. Um, okay, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, it's weird. I'm not getting those arrows like the other day. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, I'll just kind of direct you. Okay. Yeah, if you could go to the next one, that's great. Sure. Okay. Okay. So the next two slides um, illustrate the existing site conditions. It includes the right of way widths, pavement widths, existing concrete bus pads. Um, please note on this sheet explicitly over in the transit plaza, there is an existing divvy station. Plans do indicate um, coordination requirements with Divi, all that stuff is within the plan set. Um, if you go to the next sheet, again, these are just additional, um, the Eastern part of the project limits, again, right away widths, pavement widths type, existing bus pads are not in this part of the area, but um, this just represents existing conditions for the overall project limits. If you wanna move on, great. 
Okay, so the next two slides um, represent the proposed roadway um, and sidewalk improvements. So these proposed conditions um, show proposed roadway adjacent sidewalk improvements for Western, for Leland, and for Lincoln Avenues. The improvements include milling and resurfacing of Western Avenue, um, Leland Avenue, and a portion of Lincoln Avenue um, on the next sheet. There's gonna be two concrete bus pads for the northbound and southbound lane on Western Avenue, uh, just south of Leland. There's also at that intersection gonna be a media, concrete median refuge island, new traffic control uh, signals at the intersection of Western and Leland. And then within this sheet right here, we have the transit way and the Leland curve are going to be uh, new concrete pavement, total reconstruction of that pavement. And then underneath the CTA tracks, uh, we'll be milling and resurfacing. So I wanna note out that uh, within this area, the lighter area within the tracks um, will be resurfaced and then a color texture pavement application will be placed on there. And we'll just uh, go over that further um, later on in this presentation. Okay, Patricia, you can go to the next one. Um, this slide and the next indicate the proposed pavement markings for Western, Leland, and Lincoln. Work includes uh, typical street pavement marking along with MMA pavement markings for the proposed bike lane and a bus only lane as indicated on this plan. Um, on the next sheet, I just wanna um, note for everybody that the parking lot pavement marking is included in Appendix A and Appendix B of the contract plans. So right now this sheet doesn't show it. Again, that work is included under parcel areas A and B within Appendix A and B. Okay, what we have here is proposed electrical drawings. Um, so there is lighting work within the project limits. The existing poles and luminaires are to be removed and replaced with new poles and luminaires throughout the project. Now, there are different luminaires and there are different type of poles. See the plans for the pole types and the luminaire types. We do have festoon lighting and proposed string lights within the transit plaza and on the south um, side of Leland Avenue, just at the curve. And then also on the next two sheets, you can see the proposed improvements within parcel areas A, as indicated on this sheet. And then the next sheet is parcel area B. Um, these are from appendix A and B. Within the parking lot, um, there are gonna be AIS, luminaires and poles. So again, a different type of pole. So all this is indicated in the details provided in the plans and the technical spec, uh, specifications. Okay, great, thank you. So this sheet, excuse me, um, illustrates the Western side of the improvements and it shows the proposed landscaping. Um, so it has the transit plaza um, plantings and the streetscape plantings along Western Avenue and Leland Avenue. The next sheet, um, illustrate street, oh, actually, these are two further detailed planters. Uh, there are four planters within the transit plaza. This sheet and the next sheet further detail out the plantings and the schedule for the planters within the transit plaza. And then the next sheet shows the eastern side of the project. Um, we have streetscape plantings and then the additional plantings within the parking lot, again, indicated in appendices A and B, which are shown in the next two sheets as well. There's parcel area A and then parcel area B and the specific planting schedules and types. Great, thank you. Um, site furnishing plans. We do have um, proposed site furnishings as part of this project. Um, we'll go through the Eastern and the Western portions, but the site furnishings include raised planter curbs within the transit plaza which have railings on top and benches within, um, within that transit plaza in the middle there indicated. Uh, we have trash receptacles, we have bollards, impact bollards, bike racks, and concrete benches underneath the CTA tracks. If you go to the next sheet, I just wanna note that uh, along the north side of Lincoln, so the northern part of Lincoln, 
the curb just north of there, we're going to have impact bollards. They are going to be crash rated and the detail and the technical specification is included in the contract documents. The next sheet um, is more of the railing details that are on top of the precast curb. And then at the next sheet, we'll go through, this is an ornamental fence. So this in ornamental fence will be along the parking lot on the north side of the parking lot, as well as the eastern side of the parking lot. And then last, we have a proposed gateway identifier. This uh, steel structure identifier will be at the southeast corner of Leland and Western Avenue. Great. And next sheet, I just want to indicate that these two sheets, we do have four types of unit pavers that we're proposing on this project. Um, these two sheets itemize the paver types, the locations, and further details are provided in the plans as well as the technical specs. So there's going to be different types within the parking lot, within the transit plaza, along the streetscape, um, and then special tactile pavers for use in, um, for pedestrian use for some of the pedestrian friendly areas. And the last si slide that we have here is indicating the decorative pavement, which is gonna be an application of a colored texture pavement system. This area is going to be resurfaced, mentioned earlier. And then after the resurfacing, um, this colored texture pavement application will be placed. The colors are specified here and the specs indicate the process and the specifications for that. And with that, that's a pretty good overview of the proposed improvements for within the project limits for this project. I'll give it back to you, Patricia. Okay, thank you very much. A great presentation there, Laura. Um, do we have uh, any questions? And we'll open it up now to the uh, contractors. Any uh, questions that we can um, try and address here? Okay, going once, going twice. If none, um, I just want to um, thank everyone for their attendance today. Uh, reiterate again, any questions must be submitted to my attention at patricia.montenegro at cityofchicago.org. Um, if you have not registered for PPC alerts, please make sure that you register on our homepage um, to receive uh, the PPC alerts um, as we have announced that there is an agenda uh, pending and should be issued um, shortly. All right, so at this time, if there are no further questions or comments, uh, thank you for your attendance. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bye.